welcome to this lecture in marketing management. The topic that we are going to discuss is factors influencing consumer behavior. And I have a very interesting case study with me to share with you. And this case study is about Starbucks coffee. So we have all heard about Starbucks coffee chain. First of all, I'll give you a brief idea of the history of Starbucks coffee chain. And then we are going to discuss this case study. In the case study, we will try to discover how the change in consumers behavior influences the business and what a business should do or can do to take back the profits again from the market and to how to recover from the losses that it has made because of the change in consumer behavior. So first of all, let me talk about the Starbucks coffee chain. As we are all aware that Starbucks belongs to the United States. It's a very old coffee chain and it started in 1971. And in 1971, the Starbucks coffee chain started in US and it grew by leaps and bounds. So Starbucks coffee chain grew very rapidly and it spread itself into various other countries other than the US. In US also, it, it experienced a very fast growth. And today, Starbucks coffee chain is present in more than 70 countries. But behind this golden history, there are problems, there are conflicts, there are dark phases that Starbucks has seen and has overcome. So let me take you through the slides and then we discover how the consumer's behavior impacted Starbucks coffee chain. So let me open the first slide and the title is says Starbucks who is their consumer. So it is very important for any business to first of all understand who their consumers are and what exactly the consumers want from the business. Starbucks coffee chain, as we all know, it is a US chain that start, started in 1971. So it has been 49 years since Starbucks started and now it is present in more than 70 countries. Howard Schultz was a key person and is a key person in the operation of Starbucks and Howard Schultz was taking care of Starbucks in 1970s and 1980s. So Howard Schultz went into went to Italy in the year 1980 and when he came back from Italy he was very inspired with the trip and he decided to transform Starbucks because by the time he returned from Italy Starbucks was only comprising of a few restaurants. So from a few restaurants Howard Schultz was determined to expand it and to make Starbucks an experience for the people, for their consumers. So he was determined to make Starbucks an experience for their consumers and he was determined to make it built around great coffee, personal service and an inviting ambience. So he wanted to offer many things to his consumers which included a great coffee, which included a great ambience, which included a great surroundings and it was the vision of Howard Schultz that Starbucks restaurant should be a home away from home. It should be a very cozy place wherein people come, they sit, they talk, they have coffee and they go back home with a great experience. Whether they come from home or from workplace, they must get a great experience. And he wanted to create a Starbucks experience, Starbucks experience. So what then happened was the growth of Starbucks took place. And the growth took place by leaps and bounds. Uh, Starbucks became a household word and a powerhouse premium brand in the category that previously consisted only of cheaper commodity products. So he rapidly started expanding Starbucks and the speed of expansion was extremely high. I mean, within a few kilometers stretch, there were more than two or three restaurants of Starbucks. So within the United States, uh, Howard Schultz started rapid expansion of Starbucks. And in 20 years of time, Schultz grew the company to almost 17,000 stores in a dozen of countries. So from 1980s to early 2000s or late 1990s, Starbucks became a household name and it spread to a dozen of countries. And from 1995 to 2005, Starbucks added US stores at an annual rate of 27% far than 17% annual growth rate of McDonald's. So Starbucks 
started growing at a very very rapid rate and inside us also as well as outside us also so we saw that by early 2000 starbucks was present in more than 12 countries and inside us also the growth rate of starbucks was 27 percent while this growth rate of mcdonald's was only 17 percent in a nutshell starbucks started growing at a very rapid rate from here on it was not only about growth there was some downslide also which started so by the time 2008 came starbucks started experiencing problems there were many many stores in us as well as outside us but starbucks was not making sustainable profits why it was not making sustainable profits one of the reasons was the recession of 2008 now we all must understand here that in the year 2008 the world was hit by a recession and because of that recession people's purchasing power had gone down many people were fired from the job and companies also suffered huge losses banks were shut down share market had crashed so because of this negative sentiment in the market people were reluctant to spend time in restaurants and therefore start starbucks also experienced heavy losses because of this recession but recession was not the only reason why starbucks was experiencing losses there were reasons other than recession as to why starbucks was experiencing losses the in store sales were decreasing by 3% so the sale of the starbucks as well as the annual growth percentage was coming down and the total company profits dropped by a scalding 53% for the year and for a second year in a row starbucks stock value dropped by 50% so we are seeing that starbucks started and then Howard Schultz decided to expand it. It rapidly expanded inside and outside US. But by 2008, it started experiencing losses. And we can see that losses were monumental because the stock prices had crashed by 50%. And as we see, the company's profit dropped by a scalding 53%. So this is monumental and huge loss. And this was happening because there was a shift in the consumers which was taking place, which Starbucks management failed to notice so because the people's sentiment with starbucks were changing and because the starbucks consumer base was shifting while the management did not take notice of this shift they saw losses in addition to recession moving ahead what was the remedy and how things were brought on the track so initially howard schultz offered different types of remedies he did a lot of analytics, he did a lot of market study, he did a lot of study about the competitors and he consulted with a lot of CEOs of other companies and those CEOs had a lot of opinions to offer to Howard Schultz. But all these things were not working for Howard Schultz because he was seeing a sustainable dip in the profits of the company. So after a while, what Howard Schultz did was he started shutting down the stores of Starbucks and he did under the pressure of losses so bringing things back on track he did what previously seemed unthinkable so there was a time when there was no question of shutting down stores of starbucks but 2008 recession and the shift in the consumer base brought starbucks to the stage where howard schultz decided that he will close the stores and he announced store closures so first he closed 600 stores and then 300 more and Starbucks trimmed their 2009 forecast for the new stores openings to 310. So earlier they were opening stores at very high speed and even that speed slowed down and they, they brought down the forecast of the new stores opening to 310 while around 900 stores, 600 plus 300 is equal to 900, around 900 stores were closed down and it projected a decrease in its number of outlets for the first time ever. So in 2008, it was for the first time ever that Starbucks decreased its forecast of opening new stores and the growth rate, rate then ceased. So this was heartbreaking for the Starbucks management. It was heartbreaking for the consumers all around. It was heartbreaking for the marketers as to why this was happening. And everybody was blaming recession 
that because of recession this particular thing is happening and people do not have purchasing power so they are not able to visit starbucks and they are not able to spend much time while the reason in addition to recession was also the shift in the consumers base now earlier the consumers of the starbucks it in its early stages the profile of those consumers were different they were wealthy consumers they were consumers which were more professional they were consumers which would like to dine in that starbucks restaurant sip coffee and other things and discuss business over the coffee while over a period of time two things simultaneously happened first those consumers who were wealthy and who were professional they were replaced by other set of consumers who were not so wealthy and who were not so professional and who wouldn't sit in the starbucks to discuss business so this particular shift happened in the first place in the second place something else also happened with a large number of starbucks stores opening all around people started becoming bored people started becoming monotonous and that atmosphere in the starbucks stopped pleasing them so because of the extensive growth of starbucks and extensive number of stores available everywhere in the city and in the country and outside people actually grew out of it so the lesson for the business is number 1 never stop pleasing your consumers and never stop surprising them because if the consumers stop getting surprised they'll grow out of the business and they'll become bored secondly understand the profile of your consumer understand your consumers behavior understand what they need at all times so therefore consumer research is something which is needed at all times and starbucks perhaps failed in doing consumer research because of which the consumer base shifted and starbucks management did not take notice of it normally when the consumer base had started shifting starbucks should have taken notice of it but instead the management did not take notice of this shift and it blamed the recession entirely for its losses which was not entirely correct the losses were occurring of three reasons as i said number 1 there was a gradual shift in the consumer base the earlier wealthy and professional consumers were being replaced by the less wealthy and less professional consumers second there were other stores also that people were looking forward to so in due course of time there were competitors around and starbucks did not offer anything new or it even did not gave any discount to its consumers while other stores were busy giving discounts to the consumers and people were attracted to the new stores so while people were attracted to the new stores while there was less time to spend in starbucks the profitability of starbucks went down moving ahead addressing the real problem so although starbucks still charged a premium price so as i told you that starbucks did not stop charging a premium price so the coffee price was higher than the market average so starbucks was still charging a premium price while recession was going on it was no longer a special place so it was no longer a special place because of overgrowth here i would write the word overgrowth because there were so many so many outlets that people were bored of seeing this outlets all the time and they grew out of it as the recession tightened its grip and more people cut back on discretionary purchases the problem grew worse so this 2008 recession was not a short term recession it was a long term recession and as the grip of the recession became tightened people all the more decreased their discretionary expenditure people uh, decreased their leisure expenditure and because they further cut down their leisure expenditure they stopped further going to starbucks and this aggravated the problem and further brought the profit down compounding the problem was an increase in competition for years you wanted a latte starbucks was about only the option so like i said that there were other stores other coffee houses that were also coming up in due course of time and because they were offering discounts because their offering seemed attractive so the consumers the loyal consumers of starbucks were also going to the other stores and trying those stores out so this also enabled other stores to get new consumers while starbucks in this process lost a large large number of consumers
and finally it were the customers who changed the fortunes of starbucks so the solution came from the problem itself uh, customers changed the fortune of the starbucks the starbucks customers changed first uh, there simply were not enough traditional customers around to fuel the kind of growth schulz thought so what the idea of howard schulz was that we would create an army of loyal consumers and the loyal consumers would keep coming to us because we would give them a superior experience and we would give them a superior coffee perhaps what he forgot was that there would be competitors in the longer run there would be economic downturns in the longer run and when these things came true his business model actually seemed to fail starbucks became a less attractive place to hang out and it became a less attractive place to hang out because it was very predictive so as i said that it offered initially there was a lot of surprises initially the ambience was new initially the starbucks service was new the offering was new but in due course of time everything became old and because starbucks was not able to revive its offering it was not able to surprise the customer so it became a very usual place to visit and there was no extraordinary pleasure in visiting starbucks by the consumer the new breed of consumers was less affluent less educated and less professional as the customer profile evolved the starbucks experience grew to mean something different so now people had changed the consumers had changed the wealthier the professional consumers had gone they were replaced with the lesser wealthier and lesser professional consumers and these lesser wealthier and lesser professional consumers were demanding for something else and that something else was uh, what the starbucks management was clueless about so we basically learned four or five things from this case study and this case study i am going to close in due course of time number 1 any business should not stop surprising their consumers they must keep on changing their product offerings they must keep on adding something new to their menu card they must keep on giving discounts they were they must keep on giving something new to the consumers so that the consumers do not get bored and they do not get grow out of the business secondly what is very important for the business is that it must keep its marketing research on all the time the consumer profile of starbucks was changing and starbucks management was not having a clue out of it so had they been into marketing research and had the research part of starbucks been very strong the shift in the consumer base would have been detected so therefore it is very important to keep marketing research on specially related to consumer and that is the reason why it is today very easy to keep a tap on the consumer profile because electronic records are being maintained because whenever we go to a coffee house and whenever we order coffee or we go to dominos or we go to some other store or showroom whenever we purchase something we send our data the data is kept electronically and each and every purchase of our is recorded so if there is a gradual shift in the consumer base that shift will be recognized instantly because the data is being is is all available the uh, income groups are available fine so there are so many things which are available today which were not available with starbucks in 1980s or 90s because at that time data analytics was not as strong as today so this case study tells us that analytics as a part of business is indispensable because through analytics you can come to know about a lot of changes in the behavior of the consumer analytics can also tell how a consumers change their preferences with respect to product offering what are the prices which they are ready to pay for a particular product and what are the prices at which they become reluctant to buy the product or service so because of the absence of analytics starbucks did not detect the shift in the consumer base third thing that the case study tells us is that it is always important to keep an eye on the competitors profile so while starbucks was growing rapidly while it was expanding itself in us and outside us there were other coffee houses that were coming as well and because starbucks had a lot of confidence in its traditional customer base it never bothered to analyze the competition had it bothered to analyze the competition it would have seen lesser bad days than it really saw during the time of recession 
because those competitors were new they had new product offerings they had new discounts they had new ambience they had a lot of things to offer to the consumer starbucks was not able to change itself rapidly and it was not able to detect what the competition around was doing to its consumer the competition around was actually snatching the consumers away from starbucks today of course starbucks has again revived itself and today of course starbucks is present again in more than 70 countries and having thousands of stores in more than 70 countries but there was a time when starbucks had nearly massive failures had occurred to it and huge losses had occurred to it as we has we have seen that the profits dipped by a margin of 53% last but not the least it is very important for any business to keep a tap on consumers choice consumers are the ultimate king of the business consumers are the ultimate commanders and consumers are the ones for whom the business is run so the vision of the starbucks was to offer an experience to the consumer but because of certain weaknings and certain inherent weaknesses it actually in the middle failed to offer of course then uh, howard schultz uh, got down to a lot of discounts and howard schultz started offering a lot of discount to the consumers and he also changed the pattern of working and then he actually look into the what the consumers are doing what the competitors are doing he brought in marketing research so he had to do a lot of work a lot of hard work and then he had to look into what con- the competitors are doing so after such a lot of hard, hard work and after a lot of insights only then was howard schultz able to bring back starbucks on track starbucks is just one story there can be many more stories like this there can be stories of restaurants there can be stories of retail stores there can be stories of multinational companies who passed through this phase who become complacent and who who did not keep an eye on the consumer so even they go through those phases of losses so let's give a quick recap of what we have studied till now uh, we started with the growths of starbucks we started with the history of starbucks that it was a restaurant which was opened in america and the vision the vision was to create a starbucks experience then from here we moved on to the next slide which was about the growth rapid growth in 1990s and early 2000s dozens of countries it expanded to in a very short period of time and today it is present in more than 70 countries with rapid growth came certain weaknesses which it was not able to address but it was a period of high growth so after this rapid growth there was a downslide and this downslide partially came because of the recession of 2008 and the 20% annual growth had dropped and the total company profits also dropped by 53% and it was the for the first time that uh, the company had for the second year in a row starbucks stock value dropped by 50% so all these things occurred mainly because of recession and some other factors the remedy bringing things back on track hover should then started shutting down the businesses he shut down the 600 stores and then again 300 so 900 stores were shut down while the forecast of growth was reduced only 310 stores were announced that would be opened new and it was for the first time that it happened that the growth forecast was reduced so after that we move on to the addressing the real problem so starbucks still charged a premium price so the first thing that starbucks should have done was to offer a discount to the consumer starbucks was still pricing a premium charging a premium for its customers and as the recession tightened its grip and more people cut back on discretionary purchases the problem grew worse so it should have offered discounts it should have gone for customers research it should have kept an eye on the shifting of consumers base it should have kept an eye on the competitors which were changing their strategies and those competitors strategies must have taken into account by starbucks because it was not able to do all this it suffered monumental losses and it took took years to starbucks to again rebound and bring itself back on track and bring itself at a status as we see it today compounding the problem was an increase in the competition and if you want to latte starbucks was the only option so this was few years ago but because of competition there were other restaurants which were giving better offerings at a 
lesser price solution identifying the segment starbucks targeted the customers who fell in love with the store so starbucks actually targeted the customer who fell in love with the coffee who fell in love with the restaurant and it finally came to recognizing its customer segment it finally came to accepting that yes uh, our customers consist of the wealthy people as well as the lesser wealthy people it finally came to accept that marketing research is an essential part of business and marketing research must be on for all the times and it finally came to accept that yes there should be an eye on the consumers and consumer behavior must be constantly observed if the business is to be run in profit Starbucks experienced who was wealthier better educated and more professional than the average american more likely to be female so there was a time when the females were more likely to be consumers of starbucks but with the change in time even the males started visiting starbucks and even the males started spending time and having coffee at starbucks and those males were less wealthy wealthier and lesser professional so the solution came from the customers the problem was also generated by customers and customers ultimately changed the fortune of starbucks so <coughs> when it became less attractive place to hang out so this is also a, play, a thing to learn from this case study that whenever there is an overgrowth of any business that overgrowth must be accompanied by customer surprises that overgrowth must be accompanied by offering customers attractive discounts etc if there is an overgrowth and if it is going to be a monotonous overgrowth then over a period of time the customers will lose interest in the business and the customers will lose interest in the product and product offering and the same happened with starbucks the new breed of consumers was less affluent less edu ill educated and less professional as the consumer profiles evolved starbucks experience grew to mean something different and because it came to term with the new something different because starbucks ultimately accepted the facts that things has changed and starbucks also also has to change according to the market and according to the people's choices it was able to sustain itself so therefore there are a lot many things to learn from this case study i would once again recap the main four or five lessons or the takeaways from the case study the first take away being if there is a overgrowth in the business that overgrowth has to be accompanied with customer surprises a monotonous overgrowth will put the customers off and it will send the customers into a avoidance mood secondly there must be an eye on the competition if the competitors are offering something new the business should also adopt newer strategies to keep the customers hooked or attracted to the business third consumer profiles keep shifting because of change in time and because of change in the business strategies there should always be an eye on the changing customers profiles and this can happen only when a business is deeply interested in consumer research so a business has to be very particular about business research fourth there is a vision of a business and to carry on with the vision of the business the business has to put in a lot of hard work and when a losses happen and when the losses happen in the in in the monumental size or when the losses happen of the size of what a starbucks experienced it takes a lot of time for the business to bounce back to come back to its original status and therefore a business should at all times be alert and use marketing research and its marketing mix very wisely last but not the least consumer behavior can shape the business and consumers choices can either make it or break it with this i come to the end of the case study thank you so much i am sharing my mail id that's ashishashish.awasthiavasthi@imsec.ac.in please write to me your queries and i'll try to answer your queries to the best of my ability thank you so much